to kick off week three of building Utapal. I'm going to be doing a haul video. You guys are going to be seeing a lot of hauls throughout this building series as this mock requires so many parts, minifigures, vehicles, all that good stuff. And this week is no exception. I had a huge amount of parts coming in, so I figured we'd start off by taking a look and seeing what I got. This first package is from Bricklink. It's a store I've bought from a few times. In fact, this is where I get most of my dark tan brick because they have about 3,000 dark tan 2x4 bricks, and I'm going to need a lot before this mock's finished. I think this is like 300, maybe 500. I'm not sure. It's definitely not even going to be close to how much I need but it should get me pretty far. I also got some dark bluish gray tiles and some dark tan inverted slopes. Next package is from Bricklink as well. This is a new store apparently. I was one of their first 15 customers, so I'm interested to see what kind of customer service they have and just what their store is like. Uh, they had really cheap filler brick. That's what was attracted. That's what attracted me to the store in the first place. This is, I think, like 300, maybe 400 green two by four bricks. You guys may be wondering why more green brick, and this is just gonna be used for filler. Nothing special going on there. The main reason for this order was to get all this filler brick. This will go a long way. For this week's update, I have two main focuses, and that is getting this lower bottom platform area finished and installed into the cliffside. Um, what I have right here right now is a very, very temporary setup. I was basically just testing if it was at all possible for this thing to be able to float on the side and where exactly the uh, brace behind would go down the ground. I got to make that longer. I've got to fill in the inside here. I've got to uh, put more plate on here to kind of shore up the bottom and then stick some more bricks on here to kind of secure these slopes as well as putting some more tile down. And then back here, I've really neglected the back side of this mock just because the front side has been much more important up until recently. But obviously, until I get this back part done, I can't start on this upper platform area. And so this week, I'm going to try and build up this back part. What I'm thinking about doing is doing kind of this stair method right here. It's going to come up like this. It's going to plateau right here. And then it's going to come back down in this direction. So basically, what the back side will look like is this perfectly smooth wall with this giant half diamond gap right here. And that way I can stick my hand inside the mock once this top part's been plated over and I can't access the interior. So if something breaks, something needs to be modified, anything like that, I have a wide access hole to get into it. And also dark tan two by four bricks are not cheap. And I am going to save a bunch of money by creating a giant gap right here because it's not necessary for this whole thing to be walled off. I think if I make this gap right, it will still be just as secure as if there were bricks there. I might put maybe some pillars in there or something, but this will help me save a lot of money and not have to order so many dark tan bricks that will just get eaten up in this back wall. So those are the, kind of the, some of the things we're gonna tackle and I'll jump back in when I have another update for you guys. I've got pretty much this entire rock wall on one level. This area is a little bit higher than that area, but I'm doing that on purpose and that's because this platform right here you guys can see is at least four or five bricks tall, this underside, whereas the underside of this platform is only gonna be one brick tall, but I want the tops of the platforms to be at the same level. So if I start this one lower down, they should ultimately end up in the same spot. So I got this all built, all leveled off, so we can take a little break from doing the rock walls and really focus on this platform and then that platform. The problem with this platform is it's so long that so much of the weight is right here and causes it to tip a little bit and fall off. Luckily, I've secured it pretty good right now, just connecting it to the rock wall itself. And then I also connected the side of the platform to the inside. As you guys can see, it's all intermixed right here. I'm hoping that will help displace the weight and then kind of spread it throughout this entire rock part, which will allow it to hold a lot more weight. It's actually really, really sturdy right now. Um, I can put the platform on it, but I can't sit an ATTE and a platform. And my ultimate goal here is to be able to have this support everything while not having any supports underneath. I just think that would be really cool if I could pull that off. But before I get too far ahead of myself, I wanna show you guys what the underside of this platform looks like. I don't think I've really ever showed you guys. It's pretty simple. Um, this platform is very oval-like, kind of like that. 
and I wanted the underside to kind of mirror like an egg. That way it just felt like the curves matched the curves of the side of the upper platform. I've got a lot of light bluish gray slopes on the back here and each section slowly gets smaller and smaller until it tapers to this point right here. And probably my favorite aspect of this design is there's no plate right here. Normally when you're building something like this, you have to start with a plate on the bottom like this and then build on top. But I didn't like that little ridge that it creates right here. As you guys can see, this bottom is very smooth. And so what I did was I built the plate this kind of base plate on top of all of these bricks and then built it into the side of the platform walls. So actually if I were to remove these bricks right here, those bricks, I would be able to pop this entire inside plate up and out and you would just kind of have this shell like frame around the outside. So that's a pretty cool little technique. I would definitely recommend using that if you guys want to get that smooth look for the undersides of platforms. Now that you guys have a pretty good look of the underside of the platform and what it's all about and why I designed it the way I did, we're gonna take a look at the back here. So another way I'm going to help displace weight and kind of help strengthen this is by running these side walls of the platform all the way to the back of the mock right here. So this is actually gonna be one long stick that will connect into the back and I'm hoping this will help this from wobbling too much because it'll displace that way all throughout this column or stick whatever you want to call it all the way to the back here hope that makes sense hopefully once i get more of it built you guys will be able to see what i'm talking about and then last but not least i'm going to be working on this little stability brace thing right here i think i'm going to scoot it back a little bit more so it's about right here you guys can see it's pretty much the right length already i'm using a combination of these technic bricks as well as these Technic pieces and I'm using a combination because if you just use these pieces they're slightly bendable so the more of them you stick together the more bendy they get whereas if I have these bricks in between it really helps strengthen it I don't know if you guys can see super well but this thing doesn't really bend it's very rigid and I need that because if there's any kind of bend right here that's going to reflect in the front of the platform, which will allow it to bend and sway a little bit, and I need it to be very rigid. All right, I've been working on this platform area, and hopefully you guys can see better what I'm planning on doing now. So this is connected to that underside of the platform, and it's gonna run all the way to the back here and connect into this back wall. So now what I really need to do is start building up this back wall um, I've really neglected the back just because it hasn't been super important, but now I can't really go forward with the platform making sure it's secure and putting that top part on until this part is connected to the back wall. So I'm going to do a little time lapse video of this build. I haven't done a time lapse in this mock building series and time lapses are fun. So you guys are going to get to see this little wall back here come together. Now that the time lapse is done, you guys are probably thinking, oh, I get it now. That's what he was doing. So basically just creating a giant hole in the back of the mock. And this was so I could access inside in case interior support structures tip over or I need to fix or modify something. As well as this is me trying to be as efficient as I can. Um, this is probably going to be the most expensive part of my mock is buying these dark tan 2x4s. They're not particularly cheap. I did the math on how much I would save doing this. This would take about 463 2x4 bricks to fill in and that saves me about $100. So $100 will go a long way to other parts of the mock that I don't have to stick or kind of waste in this back part. Now that I have this back arch built, I can show you guys what I plan on doing with this landing platform you guys can see now it basically runs all the way 
and then connects back here. This whole part's gonna be redone with much stronger and different colored bricks. I just wanted to put this together to give you guys a visual idea of what's gonna be happening. So my hopes are when something is resting on that platform, instead of all the weight going down right here and right there, it'll hopefully help displace it along this and then onto the back wall as well. So that wraps up this week of building Utapau. A lot of progress once again. I've been very happy with how quickly I've been making progress. It may not seem like a whole lot visually, but if you'll remember when we started out the week, we were much lower here. This platform wasn't really in and now we've got the back part figured out. I still have a lot ahead of me, but I'm very excited to tackle the next part, which will be fixing this landing platform and building up that back wall and making sure this thing can hold an ATTE.